Hi, this is Squad, and in this video, I want to tell you about general action potential. Okay, so what is an action potential? Well, it's, here's a cell, and uh, this is uh, AT Pace that is working hard to establish the membrane concentration gradient for different ions, more Na outside than inside for a typical cell, more K inside than outside. And this AT Pace is working so hard to establish this uh, concentration difference. Now, if you put a uh, electrode here and electrode outside, connect this to a voltmeter, then this can read you some kind of a voltage difference between in and out of the cell. And this voltage difference is basically potential to do some work. What do I mean by that? If you open up a hole, then this work is going to lead to things flowing in and out. And measuring of this is the measuring of action potential. In general, by default, cell is negatively charged inside than outside. It's important to understand why this is the case. Well, the E for the action potential of the cell is actually sum of all the action potential of ions multiplied by the permeability of that ion. General action potential, let's use just Na and K. Um, this equals the permeability of Na multiplied by the action potential of a system where it's the same system here, but let's only let Na move in and out. So Na only moving systems, action potential, plus permeability of the cells K times the action potential of K only moving a system. And this gives you the action potential of a cell where both things are moving. In a cell, both things can move. And when both things are moving, this is the permeability of Na in that both things moving state. And this is the permeability of K in that both things moving state. But this ENA is uh, measured with similar experiment, but only letting the NA flow in and out where everything else being the same. And this EK is measured by only letting K move in and out, everything else being the same. So you can think of this as the pure NA membrane potential and this as the pure K membrane potential. And let's use the permeability to weight them to compute the final cells um, membrane potential. Okay, when you do this, it turns out NA's membrane potential is about a positive 80 millivolt and that of K is about negative 80 millivolt. At rest, however, the membrane potential is about negative 70 millivolt. Well, this is because at rest, the permeability of K is greater than the permeability of NA. So this term is weighted more than this term. And overall, the influence of negative winds and that's the cell's resting membrane potential. So let's draw this in a graph. Uh, this is the millivolt y-axis, positive infinity to negative infinity. And let me draw the negative 70 here, resting. So this is the resting membrane potential. And let me also draw that of the um, pure K membrane potential and here the pure Na membrane potential. Again, it's closer to the K than Na because permeability of K is greater than that of the Na. An action potential usually goes like this, it shoots up and goes down again, over, go down and resets. Let's understand the players. Voltage gated Na channel, and you also have stimulation gated Na channel, voltage gated potassium channel. Okay, so voltage gated Na channel, there's only one type, and this is how it looks like. Here's the membrane, this is the outside of the cell, this is the inside of the cell, boom. You have more Na outside than inside, so things want to go in. But this channel has two uh, gates, this one called M gate, and this one called the H gate. And these two gates behave differently, and let me explain that difference in this graph. X axis here is the millivolt, let's draw negative 60 here. And this is the positive infinity, negative infinity. Y-axis is the openness. So here, one, everything's open, zero, nothing's open. So the M gate here is at rest um, closed. And as you increase the potential from negative to positive, it's going to start open and get to full open when voltage is high. On the other hand, the H gate starts open but it's gonna go down as you increase the membrane potential. And around resting phase, here-ish, you can see there's some M open, some H open, some M closed, some H closed. 
So some NA is moving in and out, and this is actually this uh, influence of NA to pull the memory potential towards NA because of this little bit of moving in and out. Okay, so here at rest, around here, negative 70, we see that the H gate is open, but the M gate is closed on average. So let's draw that here. M is closed, H is open. And this will be the resting, so it's the same around here. But now you have another gate, the X gated NA channel, which is closed and it's simpler with one door. And when you have some kind of stimulation, maybe from your nervous system, acetylcholine, then this is going to open. And when this channel opens, then NA is going to start to flow into the cell. And what happens is that now cell is going to be more and more and more positive, right? And also, let's think of what happens to the voltage gated NA channel. Well, you're moving it from here to here. And look, now M is open and H should be closed. But here comes a crucial difference between H and M. M is much faster when it comes to closing and opening than H. And this leads to M quickly opening, a lot of them, and H slow to close. And because of this, around here, the M is open, H is still open, slow to close. M is even more open, H is still trying to close but slow. Well, eventually, you will get to a point where M is very open, but H is now completely closed. And this is why here you get a peak, no more NA coming into the cell. And why not just keep that voltage to be constant? Why would it go down? Well, this is because the third player, the voltage gated K channel. By the way, there are many voltage gated K channels, and this is just one of them, which behaves like this. Boom. As you increase the potential of this cell, then openness is going to increase for this specific K channel. I'm going to use I for the concept that it's just one of many voltage gated K channels. So what happens when K gate opens? Well, there's more K in the cell than out the cell. So they're going to go out, leaving the cell to be more negative. And that's why now the cell potential is about to drop. And during this whole process, the M gate is going to start to close back up again because look, M is now going to close as you go from more positive to more negative. H is, yeah, H should open back up, right? But again, H is just so slow. So as M is closing, H is slow to get to its open resting state. And even here, M is closed, H is still closed. And around here, they're both closed, but around here, H will start to now open back up again. And why is this important? Well, this is important because you see this dip here? And this dip happens because there's only one type of voltage gated sodium channel. Look, this is that type and it's completely closed. It's slow to open. And because of this, this little influence that is needed to maintain the negative 70 is gone. So now K is winning completely. So the memory potential is closer even more to that of Ks. But eventually the H will open back up again. This influence is now recovered and boom, resting memory potential is achieved. Let's draw the cartoon for the K. So K channel here should be closed, but here starts open up again, very open, very open. It's trying to close and our oldest is closed. So when the voltage is low or under this, K is closed. But when the voltage is high in this area, K opens back to um, drive the K to go out and drive down this process. This is just one of many uh, voltage gate K channels. When cells at the resting membrane potential, other K channel is going to be, I'm going to use J, open. And this open J is going to maintain that initial high K permeability to keep the cell's membrane potential close to that of the case. Okay, so one more time. Initial, a lot of K moving, no NA moving. Hit, NA start to move, cells start to become positive. Why? M quickly open. So M is working here. Open, 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 open. 
a lot of NA moving. H should be close looking at this steady state characteristic, but H is slow to move. So H will close with a little bit of lag. And this lag is what leads NA to move into the cell. And H is not just slow to close, but it's also slow to open. Here, M is open, but M is going to start to close back up again. And during this drop, what's happening is that voltage gate, the K channel, one of many, is pulling the K out of the cell to drive down this voltage. And here, H is still closed, slow to open, but H will eventually open up again. And until then, NA will have no influence. So this is called the uh, absolute refractory period where even if you stimulate here, NA gates are closed. They're useless because of H's slow opening. H have nullified NA's permeability. So if you stimulate this cell in any of this phase, H is closed. The cell is not going to be able to generate another action potential again here. You have to wait for this H to completely be open up again and then boom, generate another one, another one and so forth.